Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to look at a Marantz PM30. Specifications for the amp, it will deliver 30 watt, 35 watts per channel into 2 times 8 times speaker load or 40 watts per channel. Frequency response is 10 Hz up to 60 kHz and total harmonic distortion will be coming in at 0.15%. Input sensitivity is standard for the moving magnet stroke phono input and that's 2.5 millivolts. And then for the line inputs, you're looking at 150 millivolts. So a little bit lower, you know, sometimes some of the, the more modern amplifiers probably in the range of up to about 250 millivolts, but 150 on these amps. And then dimension wise, all standard, so 420 by 118 by 280 millimeters. Slightly heavier than most amplifiers, so this would be uh, approximately 10 kilograms overall. Now, this amp came in with, I'd say, an age related fault. So when you went on to test, you could hear that there was quite low level distortion on both channels. And you could do this either via the headphones or via the rear speaker connections. And what has happened here is over time, the input selection switch has become oxidized. And that's a very, very common issue. Now you could, if you wanted to, spray some kind of contact cleaner into there. But it tends to be more of a temporary type repair. As I'm showing, it's better to just desolder the input selection switch from the main board and then use a fiberglass pencil to clean up all the contacts, get rid of all that oxidization, and then after that, just apply, say, a deoxid lubricant, which will then ensure the smooth switching once it's been reassembled and then put back into the board. But the switch was the main issue, but also as well, the speaker protection relay should always be replaced. And I show that towards the latter part of the video. And if we'd zoomed in, what you would have seen is that the switching contacts were heavily oxidized and not just simply oxidized where you could clean it off and they'd be okay again. They were also pitted as well. And that again is age related that the amplifier, you know, no doubt had been used for quite a considerable time period. And that on off switching of the relay resulted in the contacts themselves just oxidizing and then becoming worn then. Now, a really nice amplifier to work on, and I would also say as well, the sound reproduction from this amp is really, really good, as is the case with most more amplifiers, to be honest. So, in terms of what's the approach, if you turn the amplifier over, you'll find that there's like a service hatch. And what you do is you remove multiple screws, and then you would take a pair of cutters, and then you can just cut the links, and then just remove the plate. I would tell you not to do that and the reason why is that you can't get full access to the amplifier board by doing that also as well it's far better to work and, and look at all of the circuit boards in the amplifier don't just focus on the main board itself so what i'm showing in the video really again and i've often used this term is a systematic approach to both repair and service for this amplifier. So I'm going to provide you some insight, which is critically important, and this would apply to the Marantz series amplifier. So if you're going to be working maybe on the 50 series or 30 series or 40 series or 60 series, it doesn't matter. It's still going to apply because they were designed about the same time period and they've used almost similar techniques in terms of design and the main amp board is a common design throughout throughout the range or, or different series of amps. It's just that the output channels, for example, in terms of power components, you know, is different, and the power supplies are different because they have to deliver more current to the final speaker loads. So you can see from the video, this, this amplifier came in and it was almost immaculate. There was hardly any dust inside, and what you didn't have is this horrible brown glue, which is both corrosive and also slightly conductive which you see on the 60 series or 66 series amplifier in the protection circuit. There was nothing. And literally it's a case of just wiping it down, you know, with a long hair brush just to remove any residual dust. And the approach that you should take, first of all, once the top cover's been removed, you need to remove the rear back plate. So you remove the different fixing screws which go into the RCA input sockets. But what I'm also showing you is the back plate where the speaker terminals are secured and what you can see there's two screw holes for the left and right channel 
where there's no paint covering at all and they're copper based screws that go into there now this is critically important there is a common ground connection for both the left and right channel for the main amp board and that common ground connection is made via the speaker fixing term or speaker fixing screws securing screws that you see and then when the back plate is then screwed to the overall chassis that connects it electronically to the circuit if you remove the back plate and you carry out the repair work and this is very common right engineers do this all the time you may not refit the back plate and you'll power it up and on some amplifiers that's perfectly okay and there will be no issue but because of this common ground connection it's a serious issue so if you do that then unless you have say a dimble tester in circuit if you did it would light extremely brightly you will literally destroy the output transistors and probably the drivers in the amp so if you're going to be making a test after you do repair or service most important ensure that back plate is secure and then you also you have the speaker fixing screws all right just to avoid any issue so coming back to the service hatch that you can get access to the main board that's what I've just described is not in the service manual because it probably assumes that you're going to do the service work via the service hatch and then of course the back plate's on so you're not going to have the issue when you come to test it but just be aware of that so once I've removed it and again what I show in the video is I'm just starting from left to right and I work my way around the amplifier now there are always dry solder joints on the input RCA sockets and some of those are shown but don't just stop there what you also need to check are these multi ribbon cables which connect each of the boards to the different other boards so for example these cables which are then going over to the front tone board to the volume control also from the main amplifier board back to the tone board and then also to the power supply so just verify and again I'm showing in the video that there were some dry joints and what this does is it just provides that longevity but also when you come to testing you're not looking at what you think is the original fault but actually it's work that you could have carried out during the repair and then service so I'll resolder all these connections and then what I do is I remove from the circuit board the input selection switch and I'm showing it here and as I said earlier I will clean the contacts inside with a fiberglass pencil and then lubricant grease on there and then refix it to the board just make sure you get the correct alignment when you rotate the input selection switch just to make sure that you know it, it indexes correctly and you can do that right you can just clip on the ribbon which is this metal band that goes back to the main switch and then just rotate it ensure that it's indexing correctly before you solder it back into the board straightforward enough and then once I've done that I focus on the main amp board and then the way in which you can remove it is that you have two fixing screws left and right through the heat sink into the main chassis and then you have these two metal pla uh, tabs towards the front towards the tone board and then you can just push them and then there's just a PCB standoff plastic pillar just squeeze in with a pair of pliers and you can lift up the amp board and I would also advise then just to release the multi-pin connectors you just literally pull them up and then you can pull out the ribbon cables and then that gives me full access to the board now again on the 40, 50, 60 series and the 30 series Marantz amplifiers there are always dry solder joints and it's a very common issue where you have the voltage driver transistor which is mounted onto the heat sink and I'm showing it in the video where it zooms in and there's solder cracks around there so always reflow all of those that is a common issue where an amplifier could go into protection mode but it may also blow the power fuse now there were dry joints around the driver transistor or the voltage driver transistor but I also found that the input protection fuse had been replaced and it was a one amp fast blow fuse which is wrong that fuse should be a, a time delay or a T type fuse rated at 1.6 amps so that was correctly fitted so I'm suspecting here that at some point the fuse had blown because of the dry joints on the board so once that's all been done I then replace the speaker protection relay and that is a 24 volt double pole changeover relay the type I use here are vacuum sealed the other type which is shown in the video you can remove the top cover and um, providing the contacts weren't pitted 
as this one was you could clean off any oxidization then but this oxidization same with the limit switch causes the distortion because it's a resistive connection and remember that you're dealing with very very low level signals when it's a phono input and you know, 2.5 millivolts or less is not a high signal value so it's very very easy for that signal to become attenuated and then distorted then and then what I do after that is I lift up the input power board and you'll often find dry solder connections on the switch itself so again resolder all of those just make sure everything is good and then what I then do is I remove the front fascia and you have a series of locking screw locking nuts so if I undo the three locking nuts and then when I look from the rear what I can do is I can unscrew two fixing screws which are left and right of the push button and there's like a metal frame and then I'll also do the securing screw for the headphone socket as well once I've removed that I can get access then to the tone board and I'll look at the headphone socket as shown and often you will find dry solder joints here so again reflow them and then I also look at the balance control also the bass and treble it's not uncommon again on this series of amplifier to find dry solder joints on the balance controls so just reflow make sure they're all good and remember these multi-ping sockets also connect from the other boards so you need to check those and verify them as well finally I'll also focus on the volume control locking nut once it's been removed you can just slide it out there's two clips and then when you turn it over as shown you can get access to the solder connections and because it's mechanical and there's some level of stress you can desolder or resolder depending on what you find for me there was probably two dry joints on here so I just resolder all of those and then what I then do is I then reassemble the amplifier remembering to put the back plate on and the speaker secure speaker terminal securing screws and then for this amplifier the overall bias current is low in comparison to some of the other amplifiers so a lot of the Marantz the typical bias current when you go across the test points is 20 millivolts but for the PM30 it's lower than that it actually uh, should be set to 15 millivolts and what I show in the video is an extract of the circuit diagram from the service manual and it shows the driver stage and then it also shows the output stage of the amp now for the amplifier you don't have the same types of test points that you would see maybe on a PM5004 what you have are these dual emitter resistors and you can kind of see them in the video they're close to the output transistors on the heat sinks and they have connections which just protrude up so you need to connect directly across the two resistors with your multimeter just set it to millivolts or voltage and then what I do is you just adjust the bias preset trimmers then one for the left and then one for the right and again I've mentioned this multiple times it's probably beneficial just to clean those preset trimmers with the power off and move it once it's been sprayed with a contact cleaning light dioxide move backwards and forwards a number of times turn it back to its original position and then no speakers connected volume control at minimum all of the controls set to midpoint I'm able then very precisely and smoothly to bring the amplifier then to its its preset position which is 15 millivolts for the uh, output transistors then and don't just you know do the adjustment and then just put the lid back on do the initial adjustment probably after 15 minutes and then leave the amplifier running maybe for you know an hour maybe a couple of hours and then you can then come back and then do the final adjustment to make sure that everything is is good at the same time when I had the tone control board out I also did the uh, cleaning of those controls and you have a number of switches on there as well so those switches is where you will select the uh, tape 1 tape 2 inputs and then where you can copy between the two so just spray some deoxide into there and also the direct mode switch or tone defeat switches in there so again you can then uh, just clean that then with deoxide then and then once that was all done the amplifier then could be reassembled after final test and as I said really a really nice amplifier you know to, to work on and to service and uh, if you are looking for maybe an entry-level amplifier with a good quality sound then you know I definitely recommend a PM30 the other nice thing about this and you, you tend to lose this on some of the 40 series of amps 
it still has a dedicated balance control on some of the 40 series you, you didn't have that um, so although it's entry level and plus it has the moving magnet input as well so for people who are getting back into vinyl or maybe getting into vinyl for the first time you know you wouldn't be disappointed if you spent your money to pick up one of these and uh, just carry out the work that you've seen in the video and you will be uh, you'll be rewarded with a good quality amplifier then all right so i uh, thank you uh, for stopping by and as always if you have any questions come back and email audio amplifier servicing at aol.com and i'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have all right so take care until the next time thank you and goodbye